Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's bring to the stage Rick Gomez, CMO of Target, but also an inspiration to me. Let's give a huge round of applause. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here, uh, to be able to talk about Target and retail and everything that's going on. Now, during our first 50 years in business, Target has become one of the most beloved brands in America by going big. Big stores, a ton of flash, big brand moments. But to win in today's environment, we, need to, we know it's not enough to just be big. Brands have to also be human. So what I'd like to do with you today is share three very different stories that all have one common theme. The theme is how are we trying to make Target more empathetic, more real, and more relevant? Frankly, how we're trying to make Target feel a little less big, while at the same time growing our business to be even bigger. Now, one of our major successes over the last couple of years has been our small format strategy. It's focused on dense urban communities and areas near major college campuses places where our prototypical suburban big box store would have never worked out. Now, New York City is a priority market for these smaller stores. And when we enter a new part of the city, we'll sometimes host a, a grand opening to introduce Target and to show off the store that's been designed specifically for that neighborhood. And these celebrations can be a whole lot of fun. Our events in Tribeca and Herald Square were really, really well received. So in July, we wanted to do the same thing when we opened in the East Village. And as you can see here, we put up a temporary facade. It was a nod to the history of the community. At the top are the small apartments, and then the mom and pop shops at street level. And then on the far left, you can see TRGT, our play on the iconic and now closed CBGB punk rock club. On the surface, everything went great. Lots of people showed up, but they had a ton of fun. But then things went sideways, and they went sideways quickly. It started when a blogger called us out for our take on the local culture. We got thrown into a, a debate over gentrification. We were criticized for connecting Target to CBGB, a club which was made famous because brands like the Beastie Boys had once played there. The story went viral on social media. Then local and national media outlets ran with it. Look, our intention was to celebrate the community. But we made a mistake. We made a big mistake. Because we tried to be the community rather than being target. So we did a few things. First, we didn't try to rationalize our way out of this. We accepted the criticism. We should have done better. We apologized, and we apologized very publicly and very quickly. And then we took a long, hard look at our plans for the Lower East Side store, which was opening a few weeks later. We worked closely with government affairs and community relations, and we showed our plans to the neighborhood residents, and we incorporated their feedback. And all of this led to a great event built around Target and Summer Fun. The rain held off, the crowds were big, and for one of the few times in my career, I was glad to see nothing go viral and no national media coverage. <laughs> Everything was strictly local, and it was focused on our opening. Now, I'd like to talk about something that we more or less got right from the beginning, but we've been improving as the years have gone by, and that's our swim business. This has always been a very strong category for Target, and I'm really proud that today Target has the number one market share in swim a position that we have taken from Victoria's Secret. But a significant turning point came a couple of years ago. We asked our guests, hypothetically, we asked our guests if they would go to a pool party at Justin Timberlake's house. And the results were stunning. A lot of them said they wouldn't go because they just don't feel confident in their swimsuit. Think about that. If these guests were willing to skip an imaginary pool party, 
they probably are also missing out on a lot of real moments of joy. Spending time with family, spending time with friends, playing with kids. They're missing out on those moments that you just can't get back. And they're missing out because of an unrealistic look created by a whole lot of swimsuit marketing. So in 2016, we put body inclusivity at the center of a campaign built around no FOMO, no fear of missing out. It was something any of our guests, regardless of their body type, could see themselves in. Then last summer, we went even further. You see, our creative team working on SWIM happened to be all women. And as they began to shoot the campaign, they agreed we should try something new. They wanted to celebrate these women just as they are. So our swim campaign included no airbrushing at all. You know, one of our cr uh, creatives would later say, this was super inspiring, but you know, it didn't really feel like a breakthrough. It felt like a small step that was the right thing to do. Yes, it was a small step, it was a tactical change, but I think, I think it was a pretty major breakthrough. Certainly for that guest who had felt left out, but also for Target because it demonstrated the importance of speaking up when you have a good idea. It forever changed the way we market SWIM. It put us out in front of the industry. And I honestly believe it made us a better, more human company. Finally, we know that we have to think differently about how we create and how we share content. Because marketing is, a lot, is about a whole lot more than just telling people that we sell stuff. We have to cultivate communities around our brands. Now, we're in the midst of trying this for the first time right now in, in some work that's aimed at Generation Z, though somewhere between the ages of 13 and 24. And in full disclosure, after we convened a focus group this spring, it was very clear to us that we have a lot of work in front of us. Because when we asked these guys, who is Target for? More often than not, the answer? was my mom and dad. Ouch, that hurts. Um, but message was received. We needed to get more relevant, and we needed to do it fast. The new private label brands that we just launched for Gen Z this summer, they give us a chance to wipe the slate clean with the future, these future guests. So rather than just calling our agencies or pulling together a cross-functional team, what we did is we pulled together a group of young people so we could learn from them and that they could create content that's re relevant to millions of Gen Z who are just like them on a new Instagram handle, at Target Tag. Now, some of these new Target contributors were already legit stars in social media, but all of them are incredibly, incredibly talented and inspiring. And what I think is really important is that they're helping us think differently about how we present the Target brand. Let's take a look at the energy that they're bringing to this work. There's such power in being yourself. When I was about 13 or 14, I wanted to buy myself a Christmas present. I went on Target and I bought my first pair of roller skates. <laughs> Skating is kind of a metaphor for me because it's like everyone's afraid to fall, but what if you don't? Think about what she just said. Everyone's afraid to fall, but what if you don't? More than ever, I think that is the mindset that we need to adopt as marketing leaders. I think it sums up some of the things that have become clear to me and that I'd like to leave with you today. First, empathy matters. Put yourself in the shoes of your guest, your consumer, your audience. Whether it's our response to our East Village mistake or the making of our swim campaign more inclusive or the approach that we're taking with Gen Z. Our decisions were driven by being human and creating our audience and treating them like real people. Next, no matter how long you've been doing this, no matter how long you've been doing this, you have to embrace the expertise of others. 
Our no airbrush swim campaign didn't come from me or my leadership team. It came from the people who were doing the work. My job wasn't to direct them. It was just to listen to them. And finally, no matter what's happening today, you can't lose focus on what's coming next. Because the only thing, the only thing that guarantees tomorrow's success is how we prepare for tomorrow today. Thank you.